This is Yamcha. Yes, you have seen the memes, the jokes, the infamous dead pose, but what if I told you that Yamcha, the weakest among the Z fighters, could solo 90% of anime protagonists without breaking a sweat? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, right? But that's exactly how broken the Dragon Ball universe is. Dragon Ball as a whole is amongst those great animes that inspire many and even to this day has a strong influence in anime as a whole. Whether you've watched the anime or not, it's well established to everyone that the Dragon Ball universe is a powerhouse and even going as far as well being broken. But if this is known, why am I speaking on it? Well, it's because of the low balling targeted at the series. Now I'm speaking on this but I'm not denying the fact that this entire thing started with just how much the Phantom glazes Goku and that iconic one liner we love using you know Goku solos which can turn the most peaceful fan base into absolute chaos but most of these are justified while some not so much. We can go too far at times but still the low balling goes too far as well. With anime fans comparing characters who are nowhere near any Dragon Ball character and stadium, they could easily scale up the wall of power in the verse and defeat Goku. So I decided to take it upon myself, taking matters into my own hands, to properly put most of these shadow arguments to rest by explaining just how broken the Dragon Ball universe actually is. From the beginning of the series, we are introduced to a character called Goku. Already, he is able to lift rock 10 times his size. Okay, might be over exaggerating, but still, the rocks were huge. Before the series starts, he is able to tank bullets, defeat dinosaurs, wrestle giants, and many more. After training with Master Roshi alongside his friend Krillin, he reaches even greater height in strength, able to perform ridiculous feats that most anime MCs couldn't even match. And mind me, I said most. Like being able to jump so high in the sky, it mimics flying. A tap on his finger makes a pro wrestler, you know. <laughs> An even stronger punch from Krillin sends one even flying. He's also able to move so fast he's out of sight to the naked eye. In this same vein, Masaroshi showed a way too ridiculous feat compared to anime of today by blowing up the moon. It an energy blast. Putting this into perspective, Master Roshi's strength at this point in time compared to where characters are now in Dragon Ball is like comparing a grain of sand to a freaking planet. That is the best I could come up with, okay, so just stick with it. After months of training, the gap in power started to shift as Goku got way stronger. He ends up fighting a guy with even greater power, the power to blow up an entire city, the power to create nuclear-like attacks, and I'm talking about King Piccolo. This guy scales way higher than what these characters had achieved throughout the series to that point. But still, with little plot armor here and there, Goku scaled even higher, able to easily dodge his attacks, tank his attacks, and defeat him as well. Years pass and he faces off against the son of that same character. Piccolo Jr. who is way stronger than his dad ever was, they both push themselves to their absolute limit and Goku eventually won. Then we take a leap to Dragon Ball Z where everything concerning power gets even crazier. Think about this analogy. Everything these characters could do back in OG Dragon Ball is considered weak and useless compared to the power scale in Z. So we have Raditz, Goku's brother who scales way beyond Goku and Piccolo. Even though they had grown stronger than they were before, came close to literally killing them. They literally had to jump him and the only way to actually defeat him revolved around Goku sacrificing himself. And later on, the Saiyans arrived. With them came the Sabermen who are also stronger than Raditz way stronger actually and due to the training the Z fighters easily mopped the floor with them. Even Yamcha until he got tricked and turned into universal meme but still, think about it. Compared to the climbing power all the way from OG. Think of the lily of power someone like Yamcha has climbed to. Superman level strength, what ended the attacks, and light speed, moment, and martial arts techniques are some can achieve. And if you talk about the subsequent leaps he has achieved up to the point he gave up fighting totally in Dragon Ball Super, Yamcha has already amassed strength that could rival the most powerful characters in most animes. And if you still doubt me, then go watch the anime yourself. The same applies to other Dragon Ball characters too. Time and time again, Goku has faced even more characters that could definitely, without a doubt, wipe out an entire planet with a finger even despite being in a weaker state. Wipes out an entire solar system, destroy universes, shatter dimensions, use telekinetic powers like it's nothing. Wipe out galaxies if they want to and each time one is defeated, Goku scales up to that level of power. And there are even more characters who Goku hasn't scaled up to yet. You can think, what does higher power greater than being able to destroy universes, galaxies and shatter dimensions even do? Well, 
where does it even scale? The angels are stronger than the beings considered gods of destruction, who have the power to eradicate the planet by tapping a finger. And this alone can't even scratch the surface of their strength. And even beyond those angels, there are ranks in them, there are some of them who are stronger than the other, there are power gaps between them and even higher powers and entities, ones that can even easily erase an entire universe if they want to without even lifting a finger. And still, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo and every other powers are slowly but surely climbing up to this level. But despite this, someone would still have the audacity and balls to compare Goku to Tanjiro. So I may be over explaining facts in this video because at the end of the day, we most of us already know all of this. But due to how DB fans can't let the fandom breathe, it's safe to say why the low balling exists in the first place. It's also a good way to piss us off as well as, you know, a good way to make sure we don't get too cocky. If that makes sense. So I've said mine and you have your own thoughts and opinions, let's read them in the conversation below together and while you're at it, if you enjoyed this content and want more, do your best and like this video and also subscribe for more content. Until then, peace.